الحمد لله رب العالمين والصلاة والسلام على سيدنا محمد وعلى آله وصحبه أجمعين All praises due to Allah and may Allah's peace and blessings be upon his final messenger Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam Continuing our series talking about the pillars of faith we have reached the final pillar which is belief in the hereafter and we've also reached the final stage of the belief in the hereafter talking about paradise and hellfire and I decided to make this lecture consisting of general matters related to hellfire and general matters related to paradise which we inshallah we will all benefit from and these are important, some are principles that, inshallah, every Muslim needs to know. We mentioned before that, in last week, last week's lecture, that hellfire will be below the Sirat. And that everyone who has crossed the Sirat is going to be safe from hellfire. Now, talking about hellfire and paradise, this is the final dwelling. This is the final stage. There is no third route. You'd either be in paradise or you'd either be in hellfire. And this is something very serious. What you live in this world, what you experience in this life, 80 years, 90 years, it doesn't matter if you're wealthy. It doesn't even matter if you're poor. It doesn't matter if you're young or you're old. It doesn't matter of which part of the society you come from. What really matters is where your final dwelling will be. And this is something that the Prophet ﷺ has spoke about. Our Prophet ﷺ has said that Yu'ta بِأَنْعَمِ أَهْلِ الدُّنْيَا مِنْ أَهْلِ النَّارِ يَوْمَ الْقِيَامَةِ فَيُصْبَغُ فِي النَّارِ صَبْغَهُ ثُمَّ يُقَالُ يَا ابْنَ آدَمْ هَلْ رَأَيْتَ خَيْرًا قَطْ هَلْ مَرَّ بِكَ نَعِيمٌ قَطْ فَيَقُولْ لَا وَاللَّهِ يَا رَبْ So the wealthiest or richest man on earth of the people of hellfire okay, Someone who has lived what? 80 years, 90 years, the most luxurious life you can think of, the most wealthiest, the richest man who has ever lived on this earth of the people of hellfire. Okay, obviously he lived, you know, luxurious life. He will be taken and he will be dipped in hellfire, just one dip. He's not gonna be staying for years. He's not gonna be staying for days. He's going to be dipped one dip in hellfire. Then he'll be taken out. And then he'll be asked a simple question. It will be said to him, O son of Adam, have you ever seen good in your life? Were you ever blessed with anything in your life? His answer will be no. I know what you're thinking. Is he lying? He's not lying. He can't lie. But why is his answer no? Well, the reason because he forgot his whole life, 80 years, 90 years, luxurious life, filled with wealth, no hardships. He said, I have never experienced any good. I have never seen wealth. Subhanallah, one dip, one dip in hellfire was enough for him to forget his whole life. Subhanallah. Hellfire is no joke. But the opposite. The Prophet ﷺ has said, وَيُؤْتَى بِأَشَدِّ النَّاسِ بُؤْسًا فِي الدُّنْيَا مِنْ أَهْلِ الْجَنَّةِ فَيُصْبَغُ صَبْغَةً فِي الْجَنَّةِ فَيُقَالُ, ل... فيقال لَهُ يَا ابْنَ آدَمْ هَلْ رَأَيْتَ بُؤْسًا قَطْ هَلْ مَرَّ بِكَ شِدَّةٌ قَطْ فَيَقُولُ 
لا والله يا رب ما مر بي بؤس قط ولا رايت شده ولا رايت شده قط سبحان الله the poorest and most miserable man on earth of the people of paradise the most okay that's the prophet sallallahu that's what the prophet said the most miserable man a man whose life is just hardship after hardship okay there is no good day hardship after hardship misery after misery this whole life his whole life no one is more poor than this person he's of the people of paradise he was dipped in paradise one dip one dip he was taken out then he was asked these simple questions were you ever miserable to be said to him, were you ever miserable have you had were you ever in hardship his answer was no again is he lying no he forgot all this miseries Subhanallah, all the hardships were forgotten with the single dip in paradise. So, we should, we should go back to ourselves and think about investing, actually rethinking our investments in this dunya. No matter what kind of a lifestyle you're going to be living in this life, it's not going to be worth it. Okay, one dip in hellfire, and we're going to be forgetting everything. And one dip in, in paradise, we'll be forgetting all the hardships. Subhanallah. So, how many years you live in this life and what you experience in this life is absolutely irrelevant. What's important is, am I going to be of the people of hellfire or am I going to be of the people of paradise? Now, the second matter, the second principle is that hellfire and paradise are many levels it's not just one level for everyone in paradise and it's not just one level for everyone in hellfire Allah Azza wa Jalla has said in the Quran indeed the hypocrites will be in the lowest depths of the fire and never will you find for them a helper and Allah Azza wa Jalla has said in the Quran وَلِكُلِّنْ دَرَجَاتٌ مِمَّا عَمِلُوا وَلِيُوَفِّيَهُمْ أَعْمَالَهُمْ وَهُمْ لَا يُظْلَمُونَ And for all their, and for all, there are degrees of reward and punishment for what they have done. And it is so that he may fully compensate them for their deeds and they will not be wronged. So obviously you see, you look at the people around you. They vary in worship, right? They vary in restraining from sins. And you look at the people of hellfire, they'll be also varying. And Allah Azza wa has mentioned in the verse that I have recited that the lowest of the low in hellfire, the worst people who are going to be in hellfire are the hypocrites. Why? They're living amongst Muslims. They know what's right. And they show that they are believers. But in their hearts, they disbelieve. And they're the most dangerous. They're, they're, the, most danger, they, they're the most dangerous group on the Muslims because... We're often tricked by them. And some of them, you know, saw the Prophet Sallallahu And they disbelieved. Yet they claimed they were Muslims. So those will be the lowest of the low. And levels in paradise, the higher that you are, okay, the better it is. The lower in, in hellfire, the lower that you are, you know, the worse it's going to be. So now if this is established, Let's talk about the lowest level in paradise and the lowest level in hellfire. Let's start with hellfire. Listen to this. Listen to this hadith. The Prophet ﷺ has said, Inna ahwana ahli nari adaban. Okay. Man lahu na'lan wa shirakan min nar. In another narration, Tuda fi ukhmus qadameh jamratan min nar. Yagli min huma dimagu. ما يرى أن أحدا أشد منه عذابا وإنه لأهون أهل النار عذابا سبحان الله. The Prophet is telling us about the least tormented person in hellfire. No one is lower than him, than this person. This is the least tormented person in hellfire. He said the least tormented of hellfire is one who will have sandals 
from hellfire. From then, his head will boil. Oof. He's not going to have any flames on his body. He's just going to experience, he's going to wear two sandals from the hellfire. From these two sandals, his head will be boiling. SubhanAllah. Yet, he sees himself the most punished. No one is more severe in punishment than him. The Prophet ﷺ then says, yet he is the least punished in all of hellfire. That person who's experiencing that, that punishment says he thinks that no one has a more severe punishment than him. The Prophet ﷺ says, yet he is the least punished. He is the least punished in all of hellfire. SubhanAllah, if that's the lowest, what about the one above him? What about the level above him? Who's worse than him? SubhanAllah, they're all worse than this. But what about paradise? What about the lowest person in paradise? Okay, this person will be the last person who's going to enter paradise. The last person. One who's going to be in hellfire for some time. And then he'll go out. Allah Azza wa will bring him out and he will enter paradise. He's the last person. And the story is that when he enters paradise, he will say to Allah, well, what will I get? I mean, all the gifts and all the rewards are taken away. I'll be the last person entering paradise. So Allah Azza wa Jal says this to him. أَتَرْضَى أَنْ يَكُونَ لَكْ مِثْلُ مُلْكِ مَلِكٍ مِنْ مُلُوكِ الدُّنْيَا okay. فَيَقُولْ رَضِيْتُ رَبْ فَيَقُولْ لَكَ ذَلِكَ وَمِثْلَهُ 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 فَيَقُولُ فِي الْخَامِسَةِ رَضِيْتُ رَبْ فَيَقُولْ لَكَ هَذَا وَعَشْرَةُ أَمْثَالِهِ وَلَكَ مَشْتَهَتْ نَفْسُكْ وَلَذَّتْ عَيْنُكْ Okay, it will be said to that person, the last person is going to enter paradise. Are you pleased? Okay. Allah is telling him, are you pleased to own a kingdom like and wealth like a king of the kings of dunya? He'll say, yes, I accept. I'm pleased with this. He'll say, okay, you'll get that. وَمِثْلَ And like it. And then again, he said, and like it. And like it. At the fifth time, he said, you will get all that and 10 times. So five times the wealth of a king, and then he said, and 10 times this five. So 55 times the wealth of a king in dunya. And he'll say, of course, I'm pleased. And Allah, Allah says then, and you will get whatever your soul desires, and whatever and whichever pleases your eye. So whatever you wish for, you'll get. Over that 55 times the wealth of a king. That's the lowest person in hell, in paradise. And subhanAllah, in another narration, okay, after Allah mentions this, he goes like, Are you, Oh Allah, are you making fun of me? You're telling me I'm going to have this and this wealth? That the Prophet ﷺ smiled when he mentioned this hadith, subhanAllah. He thought that this is too good to be true. Yet he's the lowest one in paradise. So what about those who are above him? What about the high? What about those who are two levels above him? SubhanAllah, it makes a difference. It makes a huge difference. That's why when they say that, you know, you got to invest, invest in the akhirah, the more good deeds that you do, the higher the place, the safer you'll be from hellfire and the higher that you'll be in paradise. And Allah Azza wa Jal, has given us some examples before that. Ibn Abbas has said, this is a principle that's very important to understand what's in paradise. He said, لَيْسَ فِي الْجَنَّةِ مِمَّا فِي الدُّنْيَا إِلَّا الْأَسْمَى He said, there's nothing in paradise that is the same as what we have in this dunya except the names. What does that mean? Well, you hear now, like the verse that we're going to recite, that Allah Azza wa has given them rivers, right, from a wine, honey. It's not like the wine that we have in this dunya. It's not like the honey that we have in this dunya. These are things to give us a clear picture. But the reality is something completely different. Okay? 
when Allah Azza wa Jal mentions that they'll be get, they will have palm trees in paradise, this is something completely different than the palm trees that we have here. Okay? And in a hadith, the Prophet وسلم, he described that, I think it was in Salat al Kusuf, in the middle of the prayer, the Prophet وسلم, he reached out and then he went back. In the middle of the prayer, Salat al Kusuf, they asked him, Oh Prophet, we saw you do something that you never done that before. Something that you've done, we never seen you do this before. They said, we saw you reach out for something. And then you went back, he said, I saw paradise. I saw paradise at that instant. And I saw a grapevine, and I wanted to reach for it. And if I took it, you'd be eating from it as long as this dunya stays. SubhanAllah, this is what the Prophet ﷺ said. Okay, this is revelation. He said, if I took it, you'd be eating from that grapevine as long as this dunya stays. SubhanAllah. So do we have grapevines that are similar to this? Absolutely not. They're similar by name. Okay, they have some similarities, but the reality is something completely different. That is why when you hear Allah Azza wa mentioning things in paradise, palaces of gold, out of gold, palaces out of silver, and all kinds of food and all kinds of drinks. It's nothing, it's just to give you, the names are similar, but the reality is something completely different, something you cannot compare, okay? So Allah Azza wa here mentions, saying that paradise will have rivers from water, wine, milk, and honey, saying, مَثَلُ الْجَنَّةِ الَّتِي وُعِدَ الْمُتَّقُونَ فِيهَا أَنْهَارٌ مِّن مَّاءٍ غَيْرِ آسٍ وَأَنْهَارٌ مِّن لَبَنٍ لَمْ يَتَغَيَّرْ طَعْمُهُ وَأَنْهَارٌ مِّن خَمْرٍ لَذَّةٍ لِلشَّارِبِينَ وَأَنْهَارٌ مِّن عَسَلٍ مُصَفَّى okay. So, the description of paradise which the righteous are promised, wherein are rivers of water, unaltered, rivers of milk, the taste of which never changes, okay. rivers of wine, delicious to those who drink, and rivers of purified honey, now look at these things. He said, rivers of water unaltered. In this dunya, if you leave water in one place, in a single place, it will be altered. It will change. The qualities of that water will change. It will have a different taste. And then he said, rivers of milk, the taste of which never changes. Also milk, it goes bad. And the taste changes in this dunya. Over there, that's not the case. And then he said, rivers of wine, delicious to those who drink. And obviously, wine tastes horrible, as they say. And purified rivers of purified honey. Again, when you get honey, usually it's not purified until it is purified. You do that thing. But there, the honey is purified by itself. So these are the differences. This is just an example. And here's another example that shows us the difference in levels here, Allah Azza wa Jal mentions another drink. Okay, he says, يُسْقَوْنَ مِنْ رَحِيقٍ مَخْتُومٍ خِتَامُهُ مِسْكٍ وَفِي ذَلِكَ فَلْيَتَنَافَسِ الْمُتَنَافِسُونَ وَمِزَاجُهُ مِنْ تَسْنِيمٍ عَيْنًا يَشْرَبُ بِهَا الْمُقَرَّبُونَ Okay, so they'll be given to drink pure wine. رَحِيق مختوم. Pure wine which was sealed. مختوم. Okay, now they differed مختوم in Arabic from ختم or خاتمة. So is it so, مختوم خيتامه مسك. So, that wine in paradise will be sealed with musk and that's, that's for the meaning of khatim, sealed. There's another meaning is that khatim from khatima, the last thing. Okay, so the end of that drink will have this distinct flavor, this distinct smell of musk. Okay, خيتامه مسك. And then Allah Azza wa Jal says, وَفِي ذَلِكَ فَلْيَتَنَافَسِ الْمُتَنَافِسُونَ And so for this, let the competitors compete. This is something very important. You hear, this, you hear in this dunya, people saying, it's not important what your goal is. What's important is trying to achieve that goal. That's not right. No, that's not right. It's important to choose the right goal in your life. Because you're just going to have one life. You're not going to have many lives for you to keep changing your goals. So you should set priorities straight, okay? We have goals in this dunya, but we have one ultimate goal that we're seeking and we're putting our efforts in, that is paradise, jannah, trying to have 
high levels in paradise, trying to reach the Firdaus al-A'la in paradise. So Allah Azza wa Jal, who has created everything, says that, وَفِي ذَلِكَ فَلْيَتَنَافَسِ الْمُتَنَافِسُونَ Okay? So you want to compete in something? Well, compete in this. In these types of rewards. In paradise, compete to have the highest place in paradise. These are goals that you should really strive for. It's hard. But hey, the reward is worth it. Okay, so Rahiq Makhtum, this wine, sealed wine, will be for everyone in paradise. But then Allah Azza wa mentions something special. He says, وَمِزَاجُهُ مِن تَسْنِي Okay, it's mixed with another drink. That drink is called tasneem. Now, tasneem is from the word sanam. And sanam is the highest thing. For example, when you say sanam ul ba'ir, you're referring to the hump of the camel. Because it's the highest part of the camel. That's why the hump of the camel is called sanam. And scholars have said, since Allah Azza wa has named this drink tasneem, it will be a drink coming from above coming from above them. So everyone will get to drink from that drink as a mixture, as a mixture. But then Allah Azza wa Jal says, عَيْنًا يَشْرَبُ بِهَا الْمُقَرَّبُونَ Ah, no. For those who are close to Allah, they'll get to drink purely this drink. This drink purely will be for the مُقَرَّبُون. Without mixture, without mixing with anything else. Those who will be below them will get to drink that drink, but it will be mixed with something else. So again, it shows you the difference in levels. Now, we move to the worst punishment in hellfire and the greatest reward in paradise. Now, when mentioning the worst punishment, some people might say, well, it's probably obviously the flames. Some will say, well, it's the thorns. Some will say, it's shajarat al zaqum it's a horrible tree. Some will say, no, it's this, it's that. Well, it's none of these. The worst punishment that people of hellfire will experience is that they will realize that they earned Allah's anger. And since Allah is angry with them, He has punished them and put them in these flames. And what's worse is that they lost their chance to see Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Not only are they abiding in hellfire for all eternity, in their souls, they hate themselves in hellfire. They hate themselves for earning Allah's anger. And as a result, Allah was partitioned away from them. And that is, you know, truly, truly the worst punishment because in the hereafter, they realize that they are mere servants and slaves of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Like we Muslims know. And everyone is a slave and a servant of Allah. But we Muslims, we do this as a choice. We worship Him. And we admit to this fact. This, is fact. this fact is established in our hearts. And when we hear a verse of the Quran saying Allah is pleased with those, our hearts just fly. We want Allah to be pleased with us. And that is the greatest reward that we seek as Muslims. But in the hereafter, it will be evident. This is a fact that we are mere servants of Allah. So knowing that you have earned Allah's anger and Allah is, you know, putting you in that place, place of torture as a punishment for you. And you know that and you'll be partitioned. And knowing that people will be looking at him, subhanahu wa ta'ala, which brings us to the greatest reward in paradise. Allah Azza wa Jal has said in the Quran, لِلَّذِينَ أَحْسَنُوا الْحُسْنَ وَزِيَادَةِ so look at this. For those who have done good is the best reward, which is paradise. That's the best reward. But Allah Azza wa then says, وَزِيَادَةً What's more than paradise? See, paradise is something. But looking at Allah is something else. Everything in paradise, you'll have something similar in this dunya, right? We eat, we drink, castles, chairs, wives. Everything in paradise, there's something similar to it in this dunya. Except looking at Allah and seeing Allah in paradise. There is nothing similar to it. And it's not just a glance like looking at the moon. No. Something completely different. 
when they look at Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Okay, first, before that, Allah Azza wa has mentioned that. The Prophet Sallallahu has mentioned, he said that in this hadith called Hijabuhu Nur. Hijabuhu Nur. Law kashafahu. La ahraqat subuhat wajhi man taha ilayhi min khalqih. So Allah Azza wa Jal, he has this cover, hijab. Hijabuhu Nur. If he uncovers that cover in this, while we are in this dunya, everything and everyone will be burned because of his light. And this is who Allah is. This is our creator, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So Allah is so great. And when the Prophet Sallallahu when in the ascension, Isra wa Mi'raj, they said, did you see Allah? Did you see Allah? They, they started asking him. He said, Noor, Anna Ara. He saw the hijab, the light, that covering. And the light that is in this covering is from the light of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. But for the people of paradise, as a reward, Allah Azza wa will give him this. So Allah Azza wa when he mentioned the disbelievers, he said, Kalla innahum arrabbihim yawma idhin lamahjubun. Surely they, they, the evildoers, will be veiled from seeing their Lord that day. And this other verse that I mentioned, all the scholars from the companions, those after them, they all, they have the same opinion that, hey, waziyada is looking at Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, seeing Allah in paradise. And when the Prophet وسلم, okay, when he mentioned this, that the people of paradise will be looking at Allah, seeing Allah, he said at the end of the hadith, فَمَا أُعْطُوا شَيْئًا أَحَبَّ إِلَيْهِمْ مِنَ النَّظَرِ إِلَى وَجْهِهِ سبحانه وتعالى. They were not, even though they're in paradise, they were not given anything more beloved to them than looking at Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Nothing is similar to this. This is the Creator. This is Allah. Nothing is after that. Nothing is better than that. And when, when are they going to be look, looking at Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala? I'll be ending with this. There's a hadith that the Prophet ﷺ, Jibreel said to the Prophet ﷺ, that this day, Jum'ah, is called Yawm al-Mazid. Okay. And the Prophet ﷺ, Jibreel told him that on that day, on Friday, that people will gather, people of paradise will be gathered okay, to a land where all the sand will be, obviously it will be just sand. And that sand is Kuthban al-Misk, out of musk. Not that like the sand that we have in this dunya. And in the middle of that area will be high platforms, manabir, okay, min noor, out of noor, out of light. And I remember asking what some of the scholars, I mean, high platforms out of light? This is something you can't even imagine. Platforms made out of light? Yes. In the center of the area, platforms made out of light. And surrounding these platforms are chairs made out of gold. And the rest of the people will be sitting on the ground. Well, it's not gonna be ground, it's gonna be musk. And Ibn Qayyim, when he mentioned in the Nuniya, he said, Adnahum, something like that. Adnahum ala kuthbani misk. Then he said, Wahashan yakuna fihim dani. So the lowest of them will be on, sitting on the musk, but in reality, there is no low. Every single one of them will be looking at Allah. So none of them is low. Everyone will think that he has, subhanAllah, everything when he sees Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So those in the middle, the high platforms of light, that, that, that will be for the messengers. And those chairs, those golden chairs will be for the righteous people, muqarrabun. So that's why it's important to really work hard for paradise, to invest everything you have for paradise, restrain from sins as much as possible to attain this ultimate reward. It's going to be worth it. Once you're in paradise, you're in paradise, okay? You're not going to be improving anything, anywhere. You're not going to go anywhere. So your level is going to be your level, okay? So this is the time to make a difference. Now you have the, anything that you do, any act of worship that you can do, two units of prayer extra will make a difference. That saying, remembrance of Allah, saying subhanAllah, walhamdulillah, wa la ilaha illallah, wa Allah akbar, will make a difference. Any good deed will make a difference, okay? So invest properly in your khair.